Hallelujah. We thank God so much for giving us another opportunity for us to come to his presence to continue our lessons. We have come to the crucial moment of the doctrinal teachings. I tried to dodge that teaching for a long time. But God in his power and his wisdom had made sure it must be given to the people of God. So today we are going to do the introduction, the purpose of doctrinal teaching. So many questions have come. Doctrinal teachings are supposed to be done in churches. Every church has their belief. Every church has their belief. So for a long time I consider it not necessary to do a, a doctrinal teachings outside. Because there is nothing you can do between the two churches that they, they, they will accept, all of them will accept the message. So to me, it wasn't necessary. But God knows the reason we have to do that teachings. And all those questions that have come, we are going to take them and then respond one after the other. So, as usual, let us commit ourselves into the hands of God with the songs. The words in the song, you have to listen attentively, it will help you. And then you continue the lesson from there. Oh, I'm done. 
shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, thoughtless to stand before the throne. If you are worshiping God and your belief is not based on the word of Christ, the word of Christ means the acceptable word in the scripture, the correct interpretation. As for interpretation, everybody, every church has their own way of interpreting it for their members to follow. And their members are there and they are following. But at the end of their life, they are going to be judged according to the belief and how they live. So, he said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest stream, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground. If you fail to worship God with Christ's belief, Christ's word, According to Mark chapter 7, he was shouting, they worship me in vain. Why, Baba, why are you saying they are worshiping you in vain? Because they are worse. The word that they are worshiping me is not my word, but it's from human calculation, human understanding. They have let go of the command of God, and they are observing their own tradition. So... They are worshiping me in vain. So John Mark chapter 7, you can read. I have think I've just read some few days ago. So I don't have to go there again. I want to read Luke at chapter 6 with 46 alone. Luke says 46. The purpose of doctrinal teachings. Like I said, it's supposed to have been done in churches. Every church have their belief and then they teach their members what they, they believe in the Bible. So if they get it wrong, you also get it wrong. When you die and you get it wrong, you perish. That is what we call it saved but perish. Saved but perish. Or saved and perish. The possibility of falling from grace. You have been saved by the grace of God with the precious blood of Christ. But you cannot take your salvation to heaven. That is very painful. That is very, very painful. So from next time, I will show you the diagram. How we are saved. How we are saved and what we are doing. Luke chapter 6 verse 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And do not do what I say. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? So as for the Lord, Lord, it's easy to call. You say you, you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. But you are not worshipping him with his instruction and his word. Rather, you are 
worshiping him with the interpretation of the devil. In the Garden of Eden, what happened there? The woman let go of the command of God and hold on the command of Satan. The interpretation of God gone. The interpretation of Satan accepted. That brought the fall of man, human race, everyone. And his grace is he has come to save us from Adamic nature and has brought us to sonship, fully accepted as sons and daughters or children of God. The devil still has a chance to come again. The devil will not come with his own way. The devil doesn't have a word for Christian. But he always come to attack the word that had already been given to Christian. So if the word of God said black, he will come and convince you to take the red. That is what he has been doing to us. So the moment you take the red, you have abandoned Christ and you have gone to his side. In that case, you belong to him. Even those on this earth, you will pray la ba 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 ho after at the end of your life. You, you belong to him. Jesus said, Your father, your father is the devil. Why? We Abraham descended and said, No. Your action, your your behavior, your attitude, your deed show that your father is the devil. He is the murderer. And he has been lying. He is the one who created life. The father of all life. So when he speaks lies, he speaks his native language. So when you speak lies, that means you are speaking Satan language. It belongs to him. That is what Jesus said. The prince of this world is coming. He had no hold of, 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 of me. On me. We are still for nobody who in the The prince of this world, when he came and he found something that he originated or he brought it and you are enjoying yourself, you belong to him. So, that is what we are here to do. The purpose of doctrinal teachings. If you worship God with wrong interpretation of the scriptures, they are all produced by the spirit of Antichrist, the agent of the devil. He is in charge of churches to, to deceive Christians to serve God. When Christ came, he came into the world. The people were already in his territory. And he came to save us from his territory and, and has brought us to in Christ, in him. So Christ did not force us to accept him, but he, bring, he brought his word to us. We analyze the word, we realize that is better for us, so we embrace it, we accepted it. And now we have been taken away from the hands of the devil, and now we are now in Christ. Just as Christ had the chance to come into this world, to take some people away from him, so also the devil also has a chance to come and take people away from Christ. Christ has a chance to go into the world. The devil also has a chance to come into the Christ. So when you have accept, when you accept Jesus Christ, and you come in Christ, salvation is given to you. The devil also have the right to come and fight you and take that salvation away from you, so that you go to hell. In doing so, he just tried to complicate the scriptures. That is why Jesus Christ was telling his disciples, "Watch out that no one deceive you." According to Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 to 3, that the devil will be arrested, will be captured, so that he will deceive the nation anymore. After that, he will be released, so that he will come and deceive. So when he gathered the people, then the prophet that they used them to deceive the people, all of them will find themselves into total eternal condemnation. So Jesus knew the only weapon left for Satan is to deceive. So he had the legal right to deceive you. So when he deceived you, Jesus said left, and Satan said right, and you go left, or you go right, you belong to Satan. If Jesus said right, and Satan said left, and you go left, you belong to him, even though, even though on this earth 
You will continue to worship God and with all your position, preach powerfully. But at the end of your life, the one whom you will obey is your master and your Lord. That's what Jesus said. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And you do not do what I say. So as for you, you are calling him as your Lord. So it is a premier profession. You are just using your mouth to call him that he is your Lord. But you are rather obeying Satan. You are not obeying him, God. You are rather obeying Satan. You are not obeying the Almighty God or Jesus Christ. So if you are not obeying Jesus Christ, that means you uh, belong to God. That is why doctrinal teaching is very, very important. But I will come down here to let you know the reason why I have been dodging this all this for a long time. That is the main purpose, the main task given. About over two years ago, and I don't want to go there. Always it come, and I don't want to go there. Because I know doctrinal teaching is not to be done outside. Every church has their doctrine. And they have taught their members, and their members have bent their head down and they are going. There is nothing they will hear outside, they will take it. So I didn't want to waste my time and concentrate on just broadcasting the message. I had drawn to my attention that without doctrinal teaching, all that I've been doing will be in vain. It will not work. So let's give the word and let's see what will come out from it. The purpose, if you worship God with wrong doctrine, you do not have God. First Timothy says three to five, three to six, three to six. First Timothy says three to six. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instructions of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teachings, they are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversy and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife. Malaysia talk, evil suspicion, and constant preaching between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is a great gain. It's a great gain. So if anybody teach otherwise, Jesus said left. Somebody teach you to go left, right, left. Jesus said right. Somebody teach you to go right left that person does not agree to what jesus said beloved doctrinal teachings is very 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 important we have churches that believe one saved forever saved one that person has run away to the devil he's going to heaven no matter what he's going to heaven you don't have problem with those people. That is their belief. There is nothing we can tell them to change that belief. But those of you who believe that, if you get the message wrong, it will end you in hell. You are the people, the reason why we are here. One pastor, General Vesia or something in Nigeria, those of you who are in Nigeria, you are familiar with him, even other people, you know him, because he's very popular. Adeboye, uh, we call him uh, Pastor Yee Adeboye. I don't have it now with my phone. I don't know if he's the, the one sending the message or somebody sending for him. He said, brothers and sisters, I see it again. Eh? This time ran to, that's why I was saying my last prayer of forgiveness. I still did not make it. He's a senior minister in charge of the church. A lot of people, millions under him. So he said he has been seen. So the, the statement he used, I see it again, this time too, I couldn't make it. That means he has seen it before. So the rapture and the end time have been revealed to some people. And they are recording in WhatsApp and other social media to caution us that it is not as if what we think of. So we should do something about it. But people of God are not taking advantage of it. So here, he said, if anybody teaches otherwise and does not continue in the teachings of Christ, you have wasted all your time as, as well as your followers. Second John 9 to 11. Second John chapter 1, 9 to 11. Anyone who runs ahead 
and does not continue in the teachings of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take them into your house or welcome them. Anyone who welcome them share in their wicked way. You heard the message. Yeah, maybe you have even used it to preach before. So, beloved, that is the message. That is why doctrinal teachings are very, very important. According to Ephesians chapter 2, somebody was preaching me this morning and he was using verse, verse 1 to 7 and the message sounds clear and very good. And I wish they should read a little further. I, I usually, I most of the time, I, I only use verse 11 to 13 and I, leave, I let the rest go. Let's see what is there. Ephesians chapter 2, 11 to 13. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are gentle by birth and call uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hand. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, ex excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigner to the covenant of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. It's rather unfortunate. I don't have my diagram here with me. I suppose I've got it here and show it to you, but it's not here with me. And maybe next time I will bring it here and show it to you and explain this passage to you clearly. That diagram will show this passage to you very well. Sometimes ago you were in the world, so you were without hope of going to heaven. So now, you have brought near, that is what the NIV said. If you use King James, whatever they will, word they will give you, it is, it is equal to near. Close. Almost. Almost. Close. Near. It is not finished. It is not complete. It is not done, but you have come very close. So what the blood of Christ has done for us is that it has brought you to a better position to make it to heaven. The rest depends on you. So Luke chapter 13 that we have been talking about, Jesus said, make every effort. Where he has brought you, the rest depends on you. He work out of the salvation and give it to you free of charge. So you work out of that salvation. I have rented the place for you. That is for you to stay in or to live in. It is your own responsibility to tidy up that place, clean up, watch everything. So the salvation that has been given to you is up to you to take care of it so that it can take you to heaven. Unfortunately, the possibility of falling from grace is causing Christian. When Jesus' word said right, and Satan interpreted in any way to convince you to take left, you worship God on this earth, at the end of your life, you get perished. So those of you who are depending on the grace, just be very careful. When you read James chapter 2, James chapter 2, 14 to 26, it brought so many words, so many of them. And um, verse 9, verse, uh, verse 11 said, verse 11 said, For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not commit murder. The one who said you shall not commit adultery also said you shall not murder. If you do not commit ad adultery but do commit murder, you have become the lawbreaker. So in churches, those who commit adultery or murder or any form of murder, abortion on their hand, they will suspend you. But those that will fight conspiracy, slander, or all this kind of evil things, evil activities, that the book Galatians chapter 519 condemned 
here in the, some churches, unless you commit adultery or abortion or fornication, that's where hey, they will suspend you. So even those who even, who even fight in sword in the church, they don't do that. But the one who said, do not commit adultery, the, one, the same person, the same Bible that tell us we should not gossip, we should not slander. You should not so you should stop by biting the conspiracy. They are all in the Bible. May God have mercy on you and all of us. So what is it? My brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deed, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes or, or daily food. If you if or, uh, one of you say to them, go in peace. Warm and fed well, and well fed, but that's but that nothing about their physical need. What good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. You say you have accepted Jesus Christ, but meanwhile you are using satanic interpretation to worship Satan. Jesus, it is not of no value. You are wasting your time. That is why doctrinal teaching is very very important. I have been told, if I don't do it, all that I have been doing will be in vain. It will not help anybody. Because there are some, some lay people, lowly men who are, do not know what I know. And their pastors are teaching them what the church believes. So, where are they going to get this kind of messages? Unless those who are here. That is why we are doing this. Because faith without action is dead. Faith means you believe Jesus. And how you continue, let me continue, it to bring it up, verse 8, verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith, I have this. Show me your faith without deed, and I will show you my faith by my deed. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even demons believe that, and they should that. Amen. God bless you. You believe that God is one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are one. Mo, 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 mo. You have done well. Bible said even demons they believe God. Yo, demons believe in God. You read Matthew chapter uh, 8, verse 29, 28. When Jesus met the, a guy who had been taken control by the demon, he said, Please, oh, why, why do you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Son of God, Son of God, have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Please let us go into the pig. Jesus said, then move and go. They believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Satan believed that Jesus is the Messiah. All the demons, you always crap that you are afraid of them. They believe that Jesus is the Messiah. So for you also believe that Jesus is the Messiah, it's not the issue. It's not the problem. The problem is accept him as you live as your Lord and personal Savior. So if you have accepted him only as your personal Savior, that is not enough. You are not dying. When you accept him and you confess and you die immediately, that, that's why you don't need him as your Lord. But as long as you live, he must be your Lord, your boss, your master. That you take instruction from him. That is why he said, why do you call me Lord, Lord? But you do not do what I say. So Jesus said, left. Okay, I have two pens here. One is red, one is black. Jesus said, Christian, if you, be, if you believe me, I am the one that you are serving. When you are writing, use black pen. Use black pen. And somebody come, a very great bishop, the super apostle will come. And he wants to say, what Jesus Christ was saying that, when then he will use Hebrew word and use Greek word because you do not know Hebrew word and you don't know Greek word. So he has learned the Hebrew word and Greek word. So he will use it to interpret, interpret. interpret. At the end of a sermon, he will be able to convince you that Jesus' statement means use red insert. Another person can say, either way, you are free because of the blood of God. You are free to use either red or black. Whatever way, once you have accepted Jesus Christ, whatever that you use, you are okay to go. They are working for the devil. When Jesus said black, black, that is all, nothing else. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord? And you don't do what I say. So what he says must be obeyed, nothing else. What he says cannot be obeyed, then we are wasting our time. So doctrinal teaching is very, very important. In your church, 
That is what you believe. But you know that somebody is condemning what you believe. You heard before, right? And you have ignored and you are going. So at the end of your life, what you believe that someone is condemning you, if it is true that that person got it right and your check got it wrong, you are believing Jesus Christ in vain. That salvation that you received, you couldn't make use of it. Oh, on this day, you believe that God is one. Any man also believe. So what made the difference is that you take him as your Lord and personal Savior. What that will differentiate you from the demon. The demons also believe what you believe about God. But the difference is we also, apart from believing him as one or have salvation or this and that, we also believe him that he is our Lord. So on this earth, when he tells me to use black pen, there is nothing I should, there is no way I should use the red. The moment I use the red, that word message provided by Satan, I am following Satan. So at the end of my life, I should not expect to be found in paradise or in heaven. That is hypocrisy. So it, doctrinal teachings is very, very important. Because if you get any message wrong, that is where you have to blame yourself. If you don't go to heaven, don't blame Jesus. Blame who? Yourself. You blame yourself and you blame your, you blame your minister. Who got it wrong? There are so many subjects, individuals like you have brought it. They want to know which is which. We are going to take them one by one. We are not here for churches. After my administration, I don't mention church name. I'm in this church or that. I'm not here doing campaign for my church. But the people of God who are out, outside should know the truth about the word of God. Follow the truth. What you go with the truth? And that can guarantee your salvation. So you believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demon believe that and they should that. You foolish person. Do you, do you want evidence that faith without deed is useless? Man, yes, we are the, but I mean, yes, as someone gets you, man, was here, young, was here, some. I am, and was here, some complaints, I was what yes, we are the, now, so to me, for yes, as someone gets you, man. It is fully thing in the sight of God that you claim that you believe in Jesus Christ and you cannot obey his word, but rather you are obeying the word of Satan. So, First Timothy chapter 5, verse 15 said, Some have, in fact, already turned away to follow Satan without their knowledge. And that's why Hosea 4 says, My people perish for the lack of knowledge. They do not know and they are perishing. You go have mercy on us. So, here is an insult for us that anybody who thinks once saved, forever saved, Bible says you are very foolish. Pa. Was not your father Abraham considered righteousness for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his action were working together. Faith and action work together. So as long as you are on this earth, you need to make sure your, your action that prayer, proof your faith is working. You don't you just use your mouth and at the same time your action you are following the Satan and you say you belong to God, you are deceiving yourself. You see that. Okay. And the scripture fulfilled that say, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. Do we believe the Bible? When we talk of you have become a righteous person, it's not only faith alone, no, but your action also count. There are two things. You believe and you act. You say Jesus is your Lord, right? Okay, then obey him. That is why John chapter 14, verse 15 says, if you, if you love me, obey my commandment. Is it not so? That is so. If you love me, obey my commandment. If Jesus is your Lord, obey his commandment. You cannot just use your mouth and say Jesus is your Lord. But he will not obey his commandment. You obey the commandment of, of, of the devil. That one is you are a liar. You see that, okay. In the same way, was not even Rahab, the prostitute considered righteous for what she did 
when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction, as for the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deed is also dead. As for uh, accept Jesus Christ, you believe in Jesus Christ, everyone, demons also do so. But, but that alone is not enough. Amen. May God bless you. In Jesus' name. Now, this is a, a short introduction for you to note how important it is for you to believe in the doctrinal teachings. I want to jump to explain to you so that you help yourself. The reason why I, I have been avoiding this teaching for a long time. I strongly believe it will not work perfectly. The motive behind it is to help the people of God to get the truth outside their churches and help themselves. But because of our human nature, So as I've been able to introduce to you the consequence of worshiping God with wrong doctrine, it proves you wrong. So now you need to help yourself. So why was I avoiding these teachings? Number one, because of human depraved nature. Human depraved nature. When you read John chapter 4, we heard the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Jesus Christ was telling the woman a mystery, the truth. The woman realized what Jesus Christ was telling him, was telling her, was nothing but the truth. But human has the nature that if you are not my bishop, if you are not my pastor, if you are not my king, if you are not my father, if you are not my mind, that is in the, the human depraved nature. That is not helping us. So if you are making a note, you can write John chapter 4, verse 7 to 26. You will get more information from it. But let me read only from verse 17 or from verse 16. He told her, go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. In fact, the fact is you have had, you have had five husbands and the man you are now, you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. You see that? I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain. But you Jews claim that the place where you worship must be in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seek. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you are saying you have accepted Jesus Christ, and you are worshipping him, and you are worshipping is not in spirit, and it's not in truth, you are denying, you will be denying access into the kingdom of God. So, the, 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 the motive behind or the main purpose for this uh, introduction is don't only depend on salvation but after you have been saved or you have the salvation work out, work hard for the salvation, we don't work on it to receive salvation that, like I was telling the other day you don't need a church before you can be saved but after you have been saved that is where the war begins, the war of the devil to get you back to his kingdom. That is where it all begins. So please, if you have been saved, don't play with it. Don't be comfortable that you are going to heaven. 
but make sure you put some things in place. Jesus said, make every effort. When someone tells you something, tell them, make every effort. That means it's not easy. Don't take it lightly. So you need to do something about it. Uh -huh. So here, Jesus Christ has brought something that you have been using, reciting easily for God is spirit. And his worshippers must worship him in spirit and truth. It came through the conversation with the Samaritan woman. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. The woman realized what Jesus Christ was telling him, was telling her, was true. But since he was not the Messiah, the one who is in the rightful position to let me know this is the one called Messiah. You are not the Messiah. So whatever you are telling me, whether it is true or not true, I will not take it. Why? Because you are not the Messiah. That is in human depraved nature. It is not that woman alone that have that nature. But everyone, including some of you, all of you who are listening to me. I have got opportunity one to one. The reason why I was avoiding it, I have got opportunity one to one to share the word on the truth, the truth with some people. But based on their church belief, they know what I'm telling them is true, but they couldn't make use of it. Sometimes ago, when, when I was in Ghana, and a lady called me and my wife, my wife friend, my wife, her friend, husband was dying in their home. We were very close. The husband was dying. I think he had some sickness that doctors have struggled a lot and he cannot, they cannot take it out from him. So on and off. And one day, one day evening, the guy was dying. And that woman knew we are good Christians, so they call, they call us. So together with my wife, we surrounded him and we pray about Chakadolo Mama. And by the grace of God, he was healed. He, he began to sweat, and since then, the man recovered. I was at home one day, he came to thank me and my wife for saving her, him. But he has a question. He is a member of the Church of Christ. He had a question. I said, Brother, sit down. What is that? When you were praying for me, I heard you were speaking uh, tongues or unknown language. Is this so? But I, even though I've been healed, but I was checked, you don't believe. Can you give me more details? And I was delighted to give him more details. I took him through the scriptures. Apart from he even had testified that that prayer has worked for him to be recovered fully. And with all the explanation that I took him through the scripture to confirm that that language is still working. It is biblical. But since his church of Christ do not believe that doctrine or that uh, statement or that tongue or that belief, he was having it difficult to believe, even though it has worked for him. So he will be convinced. He said, okay, when he go home and his church office, uh, officer come and revisit him, he will ask them, this is the thing that you don't believe. This one tell me this one. They will convince him again. So when they go, he will come to me again with his Bible. Beloved, it's controlled more than 10 times, so I told him it's, it's okay. So the reason why for about two years I was running away from this doctrinal teaching, beloved, I have got opportunity one to one with some people. But since they are, they have been devoted to their church, and their church has not accepted those doctrines, there is no way they can accept them. Even somebody that has worked, it has worked perfectly for him. To be healed completely from this kind of sickness that the doctor cannot have solution for him, as he has come to know more with all the scripture passages, since his church does not approve for him, he couldn't make use of it. So doctrinal teaching because of human depraved nature. And number two, because of human religious nature, 
because of first one, because of human depraved nature, everybody have it. When somebody, uh, a lot of people know the messages I'm here sharing, it's nothing but the truth, which is again their church belief. But so what can they do about it? You are not his pastor. No, you are not his pastor unless he's bishop. Through the Bible, we realize bishops are not ministers. Who? Bishop, they are only elders who, elders who head local. But that, that is not the reason somebody is leaving the church headed by a bishop. Who? No. So it is everybody. That is the human depraved nature. If you have not been truly, truly born again, you are also like that. So the doctrinal teaching we are here to take, it will go against some people, but that is not the reason why they will walk out from that church. Why? Because of that human depraved nature. And also human are so Christian are too religious. We are not disciples. Christians are supposed to be disciples. Before Christian came, the name given to the people who were following Christ were disciples. Until when they found themselves in Antioch, that, that name was changed to Christian. So as Christian, you're supposed to be a disciple. But Christian, you know, or we have a religious Christian. Religious means they protect their, their, their church, their churches. Uh -huh. Everybody has found himself or him or herself in one church, and that is all. So even when they find the truth outside, they will continue. So that's why all the time you had a vision dream, you see, it's not going on good way for us. The reason is that we are too religious. Let's go to John chapter 12, verse 37 to 43. John 12, 37 to 43. Even after Jesus had performed so many signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. This was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet, Lord, who has believed our message? And to whom has our uh, as has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For this reason they could not believe, because Isaiah, as Isaiah say elsewhere, he blinded their eye and hardened their heart, so they can neither see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, nor turn, and I will heal them. Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. Yet at the same time, many even among the leaders believed in him, but because of the, of the Pharisees, they will not openly acknowledge their faith for the fear they will, they will be put out of the synagogue. For they love human praise more than praise from God. Even though they believe Jesus Christ that he was the Messiah. Instead of accepting him so that they can be saved, they would rather choose to hold their position in the Pharisees. That is why Nicodemus went to Jesus Christ in the night. So human Christians are too religious. We are too religious. And that is causing us. The reason why Christians are going to hell is that, that, that this three point that I'm sharing with you here. The human depraved nature is so human in the Christian. They think they have been saved, but that depraved nature is still working on them. The words I'm sharing here, if somebody pastor is sharing me a quarter, quarter, ah, Baba, thank you, God bless you. They will be liking and they will be sharing, even though it's nothing about, since it comes from his bishop, ah, no matter what the word is need, once it's coming from his bishop, once it's coming from his apostle, once it's coming from his pastor, once it's coming from his prophet, that one, she, he or she will like, and then write a comment, Baba, God bless you, more anointing. And that is causing Christian. So I tried to avoid the teaching over two years ago. Always it come and I dodge it. Always it come and I dodge it. I don't want to go there. It's a waste of time, but I have no choice. I have to do it. A word to a wife is enough. The last one is because of human unbelieving nature. Human unbelieving. Romans chapter 11, 17 to 23. 17 to 23. Quick. I have less than 10 minutes. If some of the belief, if some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from olive root, do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do consider this, you do not support the root, but the root support you. You will say. Branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, 
but they were broken off because of unbelief. Because of what? Unbelief. And you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God. Sternness to those who fail, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. Why are some people perishing? Because of unbelieving nature that we have inherited. You don't believe. One of the disobedience that is causing Christian is unbelieving disobedience. They have already established the wrong as fact, as the truth. So no matter what you tell him or her, you will not believe. So that person will continue to disobey God in the form of unbelief. He or she is disobeying God. Why? Because she does not believe that what he or she is doing is against the word of God. Or that is provided by Satan. And it will cause him or her. So unbelief is also causing Christian. And since I know people of God who are watching these videos and listening to these audios are suffering from unbelief, I realize it is not necessary. Let everybody stay in their church and believe what they believe. And the message to me is, then how can they be saved? They have not get it. So just speak the message. When they let, give them opportunity to hear the message. If they say ignore it, you have done your best. Christ has also been saved from that shout, Father have mercy, Father have, Father have mercy. Mercy is on the earth. After the earth, there is no mercy. Out of the Apostles chapter 17. As of the Apostles chapter 17, 30, 31. As of the Apostles chapter 17, 30, 31. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the word with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. In the past, but now, he commands people everywhere. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. But now God said, Quasi preach for me. Give the word to them for me. Let them get the message. If they ignore it, you have done your part. Let them continue to believe what they believe. Let them continue to keep what they have. And at the end, no one will be with us. No one will be, will have genuine excuse before Christ. So Christ wants this message at long last to be free. Because the message that people are bringing, I need to give it to them. But when you bring it, I know where you are coming from. I don't have to bother myself. You are, you, are, you are in the church of Christ and you want to know anything about tithes. What, what can I say to you? Unless I, I say tithes is not biblical. And hey, that's why you come for me. You want to know that the sprinkle of water baptism is correct. Why you are a Presbyterian or Catholic church? What can I do to help you? Because unless your bishop come around and tell you, hey, you got it wrong, there's nothing I can sit down here and tell you will help you to go into the water to get baptized by immersion. So I found out that it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Say so that they will be without excuse. So Romans chapter 1, 18 to 20. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the, of all the godlessness and wickedness of people, people who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, what has been made so that People are without excuse. So that people are without excuse. That is the main reason why the doctrinal teaching must be done outside the church for the two years ago. No, Baba. Please spare me this. Spare me this. It's a waste of time. Doctrinal teaching. 
one to one. Somebody that has been healed by the power and the prayer of Tom, he still, still his church does not approve. Even though what you told him was true in the Bible, but as he church said they do not believe him, so what can he do? That is why I found it is not necessary. Not here alone. So many people, so many different people, one to one, those who are even close to me, not that they argue, they have found out that what I was telling them is true. In the black, all the Bible quotations are here. They still believe that they are okay as long as they are church. So believe that what they believe. He is also okay. I said, okay, there is no need. So, I have been charged to give this message. So from next week, if God permit, you will take the subject one after the other. And those of you who are not disciplined, you need to discipline yourself. Because every church has their own belief. We are not here to speak for church about what the Bible says. It's what we are here to do. So if it doesn't go in favor of your church, you have to think that, take the Bible quotation and the point, take it to God in prayer, let God open your understanding. If you take it to your pastor, that is their belief. So they will not accept what you are bringing. So they will stop you. So as an individual, in order to help yourself, you could take the Bible quotation, the point, you need to pause it, and then write the point, write the Bible quotations. After you finish, you go over again, spend time with God. Let God open your understanding so that you'll be able to help yourself. If you continue to worship God with satanic interpretation of the scriptures, you belong to him. You do not belong to Jesus. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say? Jesus said, use black pen. The devil also has sent somebody. Use red pen. And you are ignorantly using the red pen. At the end of your life, you belong to the devil. Even though on this earth, you were a bishop, you were an apostle, you were a prophet. But since you use the red instead of the black, it will end you in hell. That is what is hiding from believers. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you. Give you proper understanding so that you pay attention. Proper attention with your last one of the doctrinal teaching. Don't take the doctrinal teaching lightly. It will cost you. As for sin, let me, I have two minutes, less than two minutes. Sin is for unbelievers. There is no greater sin in this world that it will take you away from uh, as, a, as a Christian. There is no sin that can remove you from Christ. Hey, go and commit abortion hundred times. You are still Christian. You still have salvation. I hope I'm right. Sin does not take your salvation from you. If you kill somebody, if you commit adultery, if you commit fornication, you are still a Christian. You are still a child of God. Oh, yes. But what it is causing you is that you cannot go to heaven. So you have disobeyed God. So disobedience, when a Christian commits offense or evil thing, that person has, that person has uh, disobeyed God. He or she had just disobeyed God. So we are not sinners. There is no sin that can make me a sinner while I'm a Christian. As a child of God, there is no sin that can make me a sinner or unbeliever unless I walk out from God's person. So what is taking us to hell is the disobedience. So may the Lord have mercy on his people. Open your understanding so that you don't take the, uh, the teachings, the doctrinal teachings lightly in the name of Jesus. If you need, as we are going, if you need more details, you let me know. Feel free to ask questions instead of just ignoring it because it doesn't go in line with your church belief. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.